What are stars? The little sparkly objects in the night sky, that we have been looking at our whole life, with fascination, and having the childish want, of reaching it with the palm of our hands. The most well-known astronomical objects are stars, which are the most essential building parts of galaxies. The age, dispersion, and composition of a galaxy's stars reveal the galaxy's dynamics, history and even its evolution. Furthermore, stars are responsible for the production and dispersion of heavy elements like nitrogen, carbon and oxygen, and their features are inextricably linked to those of the planetary systems that may form around them. Nebulas, or interstellar clouds of gas and dust, are where stars are born. Nebulas are formed in two ways, either they are remains from the original Big Bang, or the aftermath of stars going supernova. Astronomers have long been aware of nebulas, but nothing was understood about them, until the 21st century. But, the question remains, how does nebula create star-forming regions? Nuclear fusion and gravitation force, have the answers to that question. The majority of nebulas, are floating clouds of gas and cosmic dust in the interstellar medium. Galaxies were once mistaken for nebulas due to their similar appearance. It was eventually discovered, that they were actually a larger cluster of stars orbiting the Earth at a tremendous distance. Astronomy is centered around the study of the life cycle of stars and today we will be talking about one such aspect of its life cycle. If you have been wondering about how those tiny looking giant objects in the sky are born, we have got you covered. The more dense regions, of the dust and gas, that exists in the space between stars and galaxies, are known as nebulas. We know, that every particle in this cosmos exerts a force of attraction on every other particle, this is the universal gravitational law. With nebulas, this process happens over a long period of time. The particles in the interstellar medium start to clump together. Because gases contain mass, the process will inevitably continue on, because a large mass creates a greater gravitational field. A certain critical point between the pressure of gases and the nebula's gravity is crossed at some unspecified moment in time, and the nebula starts to collapse due to its own gravity. In the nebula, the most abundant element is molecular hydrogen, and as a result of the collapse of the nebula, the nebula gets triggered to go through nuclear fusion of hydrogen, giving birth to a star. As indicated by the vast number of galaxies and stars in the cosmos, this is a process that occurs almost everywhere. Recently, scientists have begun to wonder, how often is it for stars to give birth to planets, particularly ones that can support life. Gliese 581 gram, is one such planet that has just been found by scientists. While it is closer to its star than our planet, Gliese 581 gram is well within the habitable zone, which is required for liquid water, as well as the correct temperatures for life. The study of nebulas, as well as the interstellar medium, has revealed a great deal about the origin and evolution of stars. We will gain a clearer picture of our universe, and how it was born, and continues to grow when better telescopes and probes are developed. For more videos like this, subscribe to our channel, Explified, like and share, and keep watching.